has got to be the stupidest, dumbest, most useless drill the Eagles possibly can do. If this is their answer for the offensive struggles, we're in trouble. Oh my goodness. Here we go. Here we go. Oh my goodness. Shout out to Ron Oliver. Oh my goodness. With the new remix. The here we go. Oh my God. It's that, that's fire. We got fire here now. Here we go. Good morning, friends. Mark Holmes here with my buddy Cowboy Joe Boo, as well as Joe Bear in the house. And as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. So let's get open for business and let's wake up the football guys. And let me give a massive shout out to you guys. All of a sudden, it has been cray cray. Our numbers have been going through the roof. We are at 64,000, 64,000 plus subscribers. We hit that sometime last night, blew that motherfucker out. Pause, pause. And on to 65. I appreciate it, good people. Um, I never in my life, never ever in my life thought that I'd be where I am right now. I still got a long ways to go, but thank you all for the support that you guys give me. Now, uh, uh, let's handle some business here. The Dallas Cowboys will be taking on the Commanders on the 7th of January next year. It's next year, but it's really not that far away. Uh, we will be there tailgating. I had thought about, I was like, I don't know that I want to go to Washington to the end of the season. The game will be meaningless and it'll be cold like last year. The stadium stinks. and But you know what? Due to popular demand from you guys. Everybody wants to go. It's like, hey, we don't care that it's an ass-ass stadium. We don't care that it's a trashy team that will already have their off-season plans and stuff. We want to see them boys, and we want to hang out and eat some Joe Boo wings. So we are going to be doing that. I have a video that in the description has the information about everything. We're going to be in the red zone lot again. Uh, we can get tickets in section 315. There's 56 tickets that they have reserved for us in that section. And that's club level. So the good thing about being club level is you have your seat, but they also have the indoor concourse and stuff and the bars and stuff. So if the weather is bad, you can be indoors and there's no seats over top of you overhanging. So if the pipes break, you don't have to worry about shit falling on you you don't have to worry about shit falling on you so if you're interested go to the community tab that same information is there or you find that video about the game i already know pamela savage she's going i know e2 blue's going i know dmv's going i know i'm going miss tracy's going uh ali's going and sadly rasheed won't be going but we will be there and we'd love to see you and there is a donation button if you want to help with the cost for the food, because case chicken wings cost about $100, and we need to get like three of those. We need to get about 10 pork shoulders, and, you know, we got to get the big subs, the six-footers. and th yeah, we, got, we got shit we got to buy. We got shit we got to buy. And uh, we will be definitely having a ball. You know what's kind of crazy? What's kind of crazy is how the NFL is. You know, people are saying the Dallas Cowboys, they, they need, need this win. And, and, you know, here's the thing that's going to be funny. If the Cowboys perchance lose this game on the road in Buffalo in December, which is not, you know, when we looked at the schedule, everybody said, oh, you're losing to, to, you're losing to the Bills. In Buffalo, Buffalo is one of those Super Bowl teams. The funny thing they always talk about with the city, this is what kills me. They keep telling us that we are uh, uh, failures, that the Dallas Cowboys are failure. But do you know last year, the number one team that they had actually to go to the playoffs and the Super Bowl were the Buffalo Bills and Josh Allen. The same guy they put on the cover of Madden, right? Right, right, okay. They hyped that team up last year. They lost, and, and they killed us. They told us, we don't care about football. We're not signing free agents. You know, we're not doing things to try and get better. Jerry Jones and his crew, their, their, their ass-ass Mike McCarthy is antiquated. 
But somehow the Cowboys got 12 wins, was a wild card team because the Eagles had a fantastic season. And most years, 12 wins would have won your division. And they would have had a home playoff game. Instead, we had to go play in Tampa Bay on Monday night. And then on a short week, go and play in San Francisco. Without the playmakers that Buffalo Bills had, Buffalo lost at home, not on a short week, to Cincinnati. The same weekend we did. Cowboys suck ass. Josh Allen is on the cover of Madden. Going to the season. Ah, the Cowboys, yeah, they don't have the talent that everybody does. Bills, Super Bowl favorite. So looking at the schedule, the Cowboys early on weren't expected to win this game. You weren't expected to win this one. The Dallas Cowboys, along with the San Francisco 49ers, have the longest win streak in the NFL currently. Five games. Both those teams have five-game win streaks. You know what the second longest one is right now? It's the Giants and... I'm not, I can't remember who the other one is. But the Giants, with three wins... It's hard to win every week in the NFL. If you're telling me that there's two teams with five-game win streaks and the next closest are two teams with three, the Cowboys having won five and should have, could possibly have won one other one, a couple of plays here and there against the Eagles, that was a playoff team on the road, excuse me, defending NFC Championship team, Super Bowl loser, that you played in their house and came close to winning too. But be that as it may, five-game win streaks aren't very many of those going on in a whole season. The sky is not falling if we do lose to Buffalo. Now, it does hurt. It does hurt because you go from having the possibility of holding on to that second seed, possibly back down to the fifth seed. You lose that opportunity possibly to get that number one seed, it would be a devastating loss, but it's not the end of the world. Cowboys team, I believe, is a team, if they stay healthy, knock on wood, that they can play anywhere against anybody. Now, interesting thing is, Eagle fans have been the whole, oh, all we got to do is just, oh, we just went out and we'll do that. But there's panic setting in with the Eagles right now. You see Philly 500 with the whole uh, drill. He's like, this is the dumbest drill I've ever seen. You know, I, I'm not sure it was as much as a drill. Is we're, we're, we want to beat you. We want to beat you, okay? And But, but we're going to call it a drill. And I'm going to say, I saw that similar drill or saw that on the sidelines in training camp last summer when I went to see the commanders when Antonio Gibson, who was forever fumbling, they had a couple of guys that were literally there with those sticks and just following on the sideline, just poking them with the stick. They're just poking them. If you are telling me that your franchise quarterback, one of the highest paid players in the NFL, has to do that humili- humiliating drill, and now you got guys like Big Play Slay, who's literally saying, hey, it's the team, it's not me. It's not me. I'm good over here. I don't know about you guys. And you've got A.J. Brown now saying, we need to speed things up like the Cowboys and kind of seeming to be at odds with the coach. They got some real problems. I dare say that's a team that truly needs a win. And a surprising thing to me, a surprising thing to me is I've got a San Francisco 49er. Um, I don't know if I want to call him a troll, confidant, um, a a guy that just keeps a foot in my ass. I I don't know what we want to call it. But basically, you know, he's like, thank you very much for beating the Eagles and giving us the first place, but your team still sucks. You know, he'll tell me, yeah, you beat the Eagles, you know, enjoy it, but you're an idiot. You know, you're really not that good. You know, it's kind of one of those love-hate relationships, I I, I think. But he ended up sending me an email last night where he's worried about playing the Cardinals because two of their Pro Bowl defensive tackles, starters, are out. Of course, you got Kyler Murray, 
who is auditioning to stay with the Cardinals or auditioning for his next team. So he wants to play well. And you probably have the Cardinals team, of course, wanting to play well against San Francisco and be a spoiler. Because this is the motivating factor now that's out there. The Giants, with the three-game win streak, technically aren't out of it mathematically, but they're pretty much out of it. But they can play the role of burying the Eagles. And to have that going into the offseason could be as big as when the Dallas Cowboys, my God, were 1-15. in One victory. And to this day, out of all those seasons that the Dallas Cowboys have had forever, the Super Bowl champions and things, that 1-15 in season always stands out and is always remembered for beating the Washington Commanders, i.e. the Redskins. The Redskins that were a playoff team, the Redskins that were a more, far more talented team than the Cowboys. But to have that win, to be able to go through and relive and say, we sucked, but we were good enough to beat you, could be that motivating factor for the Cardinals as well as the Giants when they play the Eagles. So don't expect teams to just roll over and die because, see, guys, players understand. This is where Demario Davis sitting right here. Demario Davis sitting right here in my studio and me interviewing him. He said, you have to understand, you know, because we always put on the players, oh, they're not a team guy, man. You know, why isn't he doing a team-friendly deal? Because at the end of the year, when it comes tax time, you get a 1099. They don't withhold taxes. They don't take that out of it. They give you a check. Here you go. You are an independent contractor that only keeps his job by the performance that you do on the field. And if you roll over and die and just say, I don't give a rat's ass, this team's the season's over. It's going to be harder for you to get that contract with the next guy or to stay with that same team. You want to be one of those ones that's the bright spot that's in there, that's playing well, that they say, we can't live without, which is why. These games in the end are dangerous. If we can make our franchise feel good about a victory and screwing somebody else over, that can go a long way to keeping a job. So we'll see what Kyler Murray and the Cardinals do with the San Francisco 49ers Sunday at 4 o'clock. We will be live streaming today. Uh, I'm going to try starting at one o'clock. I got some things got to do. Got to get my Venables going and stuff. I need to go out and get the meats for tomorrow and things and uh, get some stuff done. But one o'clock, we should be live here. I know people don't care about the games today. Minnesota against Cincinnati, seven and six. Minnesota Vikings, they win this game. They've got an opportunity to make the playoffs. With <laughs> Wow. Uh, which is crazy. And then we got Pittsburgh that can't score against Indianapolis. Both teams, seven and six with an opportunity to keep their playoff dreams alive. That's truly, if you go eight and six, that, that's a playoff game. And then we got the Denver Broncos going against the Detroit Lions. The Lions, who Jared Goff has gone back to doing Jared Goff things, and it seems like the Lions are becoming the Lions of old. Against the Denver Broncos, a team that was left as roadkill early on, seemingly only one game behind Kansas City, if they get that game and go eight and six, all of a sudden, there's a lot of teams out there that are worried that they might not make the playoffs. So you got three key games that have playoff implications on a Saturday. I don't know how it gets any better than that. And of course, tomorrow, we are the feature game, as always, the Cowboys and whoever they play, trying to get their sixth win in a row and going against, of course, a team at the moment that has a winning record. And if we win, they will say, well, Buffalo's not a good team. Buffalo's beat up. Josh Allen's a turnover machine. If we lose, mm, Cowboys can't beat good teams. You know how it goes. I hope and pray that the Cowboys show up. Latest weather forecast, very light rain. Winds dying and that not as quite as bad as they looked at uh, two days ago. 15 miles an hour. 
and very light rain, 0. 0.004 tenths of an uh, of, of, uh, inch of rain per hour around kickoff. So the weather, it'll be damp and chilly, but 50 in Buffalo, I'll take that any day. Let's check in with Rich Eisen with the most intriguing matchups before we get out of here. Rich, take it away. I've got a top five list. Let's hey. hit it. Let's hit it going out the door. Hit it. Hit it. Hit it. High five. One, two, three, four, five. Rich's top five. Here we go, everybody. My top five. Here we go. Matchups of week 15. Big third down, more manageable. Yeah. I'm starting in Lambeau Field. <laughs> the Green Bay Packers, after taking Tommy DeVito's right cross, taking it right in the chops. Here comes Baker friggin' Mayfield. My guy, he's coming to plant the Tampa Bay flag right in the middle, right <laughs> on that G. And that OG is coming to Green Bay. Could you imagine Green he gives Bay, the Bucks a win here? They're 7-7, seven and seven, and he's already talking about, I have found a home. Yep. I have found a home, and it is Tampa Bay. And I am going to win this division. I am planting a flag. And by the way, last time he played here, he played for Cleveland on a Christmas day, and he balled out, and he threw an interception at the end because Donovan Peoples-Jones got grabbed. I'll cape for you, Browns fans, and yeah. there was no flag. Yeah. That was a big game against Aaron Rodgers. And he's like, Aaron Rodgers, that's Jordan Love. I got this. And Jordan Love's like, okay, didn't play my best game, but guess what? We are going to be 7-7. Seven and seven. I'm not going to have this tie break against us if the Bucs don't win their division. It's a big football game between two, six, and seven teams. Very big. Mm-hmm. Number four on this list is the Saturday night game as part of the right, triple header on NFL Network. Broncos and Lions. Hey, Lions, this is it. You're going home, and you you need this one. I know it's not a, a conference game. Yeah. The Vikings Questions. are sitting there. I mean, could you imagine Big Nick Mullins tries to come and win this division? You're opening a door here that you don't want open, even slightly ajar. Okay. <laughs> And you want to you want you want to be something other than the three seed. You want to get up to the two seed. You want to start restoring the roar here from the first half of the season. Win this football game, and then Russell Wilson's coming in seven and six. They are in a mosh pit in the AFC playoff race, and by the way, have a shot to win the division. They are one game behind the Chiefs, guys. I know. And so they could win this football game. Mm. It would be huge. They'd go home on Christmas Eve night. I'm calling that game Broncos versus New England. Can the Broncos go on a playoff run starting right now? Or they yeah. actually start about a month ago. But they did. finish this run. That's number four on the list. Number three on the list is the uh, final game of the week. Uh, pardon me. No, the, uh, the, the final game of Sunday night. It's Sunday night football. It's the Ravens and Jaguars. Jaguars have lost two in a row. What's going on with these Jaguars? Is there any chance in heck that the Texans can win their game with Davis Mills if they play and they win and then suddenly they're tied again with Jacksonville Jacksonville and Houston because the Ravens are coming in? Mm -hmm. Or are the Ravens going to come in and get the Jaguars' best shot and the Jaguars plant their feet down and say, we blew the one seed last time we were on this field by giving Jake Browning a bust in Canton. And no, sir, not here, Lamar Jackson. And keep this one seat as an open question in the AFC a little bit more with Mm. the Jaguars having a chance to get it because they would have a huge tie break on the Ravens here. Let's see what happens on Sunday Night Football. Then there's the Monday Nighter. The first ever flexed into existence Monday Night Football game. It is the Eagles and the Seahawks. Seahawks have lost four in a row. Uh Do they need this one? That's a rhetorical question. This is it. A.J. Brown and D.K. on this. A.J. and D.K. on the same field. Some of the best physical receivers this game has. Playmakers all over the Philadelphia Mm -hmm. lot that have not played well for weeks. We had Nick Sirianni on yesterday's program. Seek it out if you didn't see it on our YouTube page or on the Rich Eisen Show Roku Collection page. Go check it out. It was a great conversation. He knows it. He knows it. Wow. Got to take care of business in this one. The Philadelphia Eagles have the ability to win out and win the East and maybe win the one seed because of their conference record. This would defray it. Losing this one in Seattle. Huge game. And then number one, we all know what it is. Cowboys Bill. I understand. You could say it. It's the varsity. It's (laughs) Dallas rampaging 
into Western New York, taking on the team that you can make a great argument has been playing the best football in the American Football Conference Ooh. over the last month. Josh Allen mm. and Dak Prescott, two of the best in the business, managing the game to some, but to me, they are red-hot quarterbacks. You could make the case they're the two hottest quarterbacks in the NFL right now as well. Brock Purdy aside, I can't wait for this one. The Bills have a shot to win the division. They win out and get a little help from uh, maybe even Dallas taking on Miami later on. Mm -hmm. They could win the division. And then the Cowboys can win the one seed. This is huge. Mm -hmm. That's my number one. one I'll give you one more. All right, we'll get one more. There's an I in my first and last names. Uh oh. So I'm going to say one more is the game I'm calling. And 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 also that, this is what I said. It's two seven. This and is this is a big one. They're seven and eight. I mean, there's currently pardon me six and seven in the wild card race. Okay, they're seven and six, mm-hmm. and they need to win it. Yeah, the winner here's got an inside line, track, and I cannot wait to call it with Kurt Warner. That is my top five most intriguing matchups of week one five. There right you go here on the Richard. Let's be clear here. It's going to be actually should be a great weekend for football. And as always, you know, I appreciate each and every one of you guys. And shout out to Ron Oliver. Here we go. I love it. Mm hmm. Defense have any heart? Let's no, they suck. I've been telling you all season, Philly. They've shit on you. Oh. They shit on you. <laughs> Don't you hear me? Down, Jordan, uh. Quarter, like they shit on you. Oh. They shit.